안녕하세요. This is Jeff. 안녕하세요 means hello. So repeat me. 안녕하세요. Is it too long? Anyway, so today I will show you Hwasong Hengung Temporary Palace and Suwon Hwasong Pool Trees. So this video clip should take around 15 minutes. So are you ready to go? Okay, let's go. This is Hwasong Hengung Temporary Palace and this is the main gate of the uh, palace and Shinpung Nu. Shinpung Nu means king's new hometown. So we will go into the palace. So King Jongjo, who built this Suwon Hasong pool trees, visited his father's royal tomb 13 times. One, three, 13 times. Whenever he visited uh, his father's tomb, he stayed in this palace. So Hwasong Hengung Temporary Palace. one is for, for government officers and left one is for soldiers, military forces. So now I passed the first gate. So now we are entering the third gate. Last gate to go to the main hall. So we have to pass three gates before meeting king. So subject pass the three gates and then meet the king. It's according to Confucian manner. So we call it three paths. So Samdo in Korean. So the center lane is for king. And right and left for subject, his subject. So this is Bongsun Dang Hall. It's like Gyeongjongjeon Hall in Gyeongbokgung Palace. So Gyeongbokgung Palace is the first and main palace in Seoul of the Joseon Dynasty. I mean. So I cannot compare the size of the palaces between two palaces, but I try to compare the function, the purpose of the buildings. So this Bongsun Dang Hall is like a ceremony hall. Okay. Seoul is like Gyeongjongjeon uh, Hall in Gyeongbokgung Palace in Seoul. The same purpose. So Hwasong Hengung is Hengung Temporary Palace is famous for King Jongjo's mother's 60th birthday ceremony. The ceremony was held here. So King Jongjo held his mother's 60th birthday ceremony at Bongsu Dang here. So it was very unusual to have a national ceremony at the temporary palace. It was because of King Jongjo's filial piety toward his mother. He wanted to hold her 60th birthday near the, her husband's tomb, the King Jongjo's father's tomb. They are the same age. And the tomb is around 10 km away from this palace. So you can see the layout and the feast food of the birthday, 60th birthday party. This food are stored inside of this building to recreate the moment of the birthday ceremony. Yeah, they recreate the moment of the her birthday party. So this is Bongsu Dang. It's a uh, praying to the longevity of her ma of his mother, King Jongjo's mother. It can show the King Jongjo's filial piety towards their, uh, his mother and father here. So this Hwasong Hengung Temporary Palace was mainly, almost all buildings were destroyed during the Japanese colonial period, except for only one, this building, Nangnak Pan. So the other buildings are all restored, but this one is the original one.
So this building Nangnakum is like Gyeonghaegung, ah, Gyeonghaeru Pavilion in Gyeongbokgung Palace in Seoul. So it's a kind of a ceremony hall and King Jongjo when it, when he oh I made a mistake there so it's a like a lit uh, feast hall I mean the banquet hall rather than ceremony hall so you just saw the Bongsudang hall that is the ceremony hall this Nangnakum hall is the uh, banquet hall so like Gyeonghaeru Pavilion in Gyeongbokgung Palace so same function same purpose of the two buildings, Gyeonghaeru in Gyeongbokgung Palace and Nang Nakhon in Suwon Hasong Hengung Temporary Palace. King Jongjo visited here. Uh, the special temporary Kwagosium examination was held here. It's a high highest level test to become a government officers in Joseon Dynasty. So they held the the test here for special and temporary one to ceremony King Jongjo's visit here. A Kwagosham examination was held every three years, but when King Jongjo visited here, they held the special temporary Kwagosham examination here. That test is to the highest level test to become a government officers. Okay, let's. Keep watching. And King Jongjo uh, for the arrows here, shoot the arrows. And 50 arrows and 49 hit the marks. Only one is missing intentionally to prevent his subject and his soldiers from being discouraged. So I think he's very considerate. Yeah, I think King Jongjo is very his son is uh, considerate. <laughs> So this is uh, uh, Hwaryeongjeon uh, Hall. So King Jongjo, who devoted himself to his country and his people, passed away suddenly in 1800 at his age 49. After his death, his son, King Sunjo, built this Hwaryeongjeon uh, hall to enshrine his father's portrait. So the other kings, other kings of Joseon dynasty, their uh, portrait is in, are enshrined in Changdeokgung Palace. But King Jongjo is enshrined here. So you can guess how much he loved this Suwon Hwasong Temporary palace also has some Suwon has some portraits. Okay. So he is a King Jongju. Yeah, this is King Jongju. He is the greatest king in the reign. We will of meet him later. Statue of King Jongju. So this is Yu Yotek Ho. So King Jongju met his subject here when he visited Hwasong Hengung Temporary Palace. So this is a meeting place to his subject. And we will watch technical martial arts here. So we will watch it. So and we will watch technical martial arts here. Okay. Okay. After this performance, we will go to the Swan Hengung Portrait. I hope you can feel the Korean energetic performance from 24 martial arts. So 
one of the greatest king and smartest king in, of the Joseon dynasty, 500 year history Joseon dynasty. But he is also has the image of a strong warrior. He wrote this uh, military art manual. He made this martial art. And this book is listed in UNESCO Memory of the World. Can you guess by whom? By North Korea. So I think North Korea is also the King Jong Do. It would be much better if you had registered the performance uh, every week, every day, except Monday. They perform this performance from Tuesday to Sunday at 11 in the morning. But it depends on the weather condition. If it's bad weather, no performance. So don't miss this performance when you visit there. We are entering the Suwon Hasong Fortress. We will go up to the Sojangde. It's the Western Command Post, the highest point. So this is Paltal San Mountain. So we will go up to the Paltal San Mount and Sojangde there. Okay, let's go. So it should take around 20, 30 minutes. So you can enjoy the view. Uh, before going to Western Post, Command Post, we will go. We will drop by the King Jongjo's statue. So we will see the statue of King Jongjo, and then we will go to the Command Post. On that day, it was very hot. <laughs> I I can feel now. Also, I'm getting tired on the video. So oh. now we will meet King Jongjo here. So King Jongjo is 22nd king of Joseon dynasty. 
and he built this Swan Hasan Portraits. So I will tell you about the Swan Hasan Portraits in studio later. Okay, let's go. So this is the statue of King Jongjo. So at this point, I need to tell you the three people: Riddle Jongjo and his father Prince Sado Seja and his father King Yongjo. So King Yongjo and his son Prince Sado Seja and his son Riddle Jongjo, who built the Swan Hasan Portraits. So uh, his grandfather King Yongjo and his father Prince Sado Seja had different political background, political power, different political power. Of course, they were not good relationship. They are against each other. And so his father, Prince Hado Seja, was mentally ill. And he killed around 100 maids. And even he said, I will hurt my father, King Yong Jo. So that was a big reason the opposing political power pushed King Jong, King Yongjo to kill your son, to kill Prince Hado Seja. Uh, they denounced Prince Hado Seja as a rebel, as a traitor. So King Yongjo, he had no choice but to kill his son, Prince Hado Seja. So he sentenced Prince Hado Seja to die by starvation in a small rice container. So Riddle Jongjo saw this old event for tragedy. He saw old tragedy and he begged his grandfather, King Yongjo, to save him. Please, please save my father, please save my father. But the grandfather, King Yongjo, denied. So Riddle Jongjo saw his father dying in a small con life container. Yeah. So, I can understand King Yongjo, King Jongjo's grandfather, King Yongjo. I understand him. As a king, as a politician, he had no choice uh, but to kill him. But as a father, King Yongjo loved his son, Prince Hado Seja. So he named his dead son Sado. Sado, uh, Prince Sado. Sado means the think of grief, think of sorrow, think of sadness. So I can feel how much he loved his dead son as a father. But it's a different story as a father and as a king, as a politician, maybe different, I think. Anyway, King Jongjo became a king after 14 years. When he was 25 years old, he became king. And he uh, reformed the Joseon dynasty and also he inspired the renaissance of the late Joseon dynasty. He's one of the greatest king in the late of Joseon dynasty. Uh, okay, so let's keep watching these video clips. So this is King Jongjo. So King Jongjo became a king under the threat and difficulties. He had murder threat 11 times. 11 times murder threat. The opposing political power didn't want King Jongjo to become a king. So they tried to assassinate King, Yong, King Jongjo. Mm -hmm. So uh, an assassin sneaked into his King Jongjo's bedchamber to kill him. It's the only case in 500 Joseon dynasty's history. So although all these difficulties, he uh, reformed this Joseon dynasty. 
Ah, uh, can you guess who is the most respectable king in the early of Joseon Dynasty? Yeah, he is King Sejong the Great, who invented the Korean alphabet, Korean writing system. So maybe you can see the statue of King Sejong the Great in front of the Gyeongbokgung Palace if you have visited uh, Seoul before. So this is King Jongjo, most respectable king in the late of Joseon Dynasty. Okay. So now we are going to go Sojangde, the western post, command post, the highest point. So let's go there. So I made it. <laughs> I arrived at the top of Mount Paltai. <sighs> so from Hwasong Hengung Temporary Palace, it's a the distance is around 550 meters. This is the Sojangde Western Command Post. So maybe later you can take a photo here. It's a photo zone. So it's a good view. Hopefully next time I can see you in a good shape. Yes. So you can take a step oh, here. I can see you. Near how much I was tired at the time. COVID-19 makes me So like this, this is a sewer, downtown sewer. So I think you know the Samsung Electronics who makes the Samsung Semiconductor and also Galaxy Smartphone. So the headquarters of Samsung Electronics is over there. I can see that building. You can, you can see, see the one? three buildings over there, the highlights three buildings. And then next to the three buildings, you can see one big building that is Samsung Electronics, the headquarters of Samsung Electronics. The white building and front, you can see the one old building. It's the south gate, Paltal Moon Gate. It's one main gate of Suwon has some pool trees. And then we'll go move up, move on, move up. And then you can see the green net over there. So next to the green net, you can see the roof. Looks like, looking like the wings. That is Suwon World Cup Stadium. It was built for 2002 World Cup game in Korea. And then you can see up there, you can see one old gate over there, that is the Easter Gate of the Suwon Hasan Fortress. So South Gate and East Gate. So Suwon Hasan Fortress has four main gates. So in each direction. And also five uh, secret gates, secret entrance, and two flood gates. So there are 11 gates in Suwon Hasan Fortress. And Suwon Fortress stretches around 6 km, 5.74 km. So it's a very good course to exercise, especially at night. And so there are 11 gates. So 11 reminds me of one something tragic things related to King Jongjo. So when King, little Jongjo was 11 years old, he saw his father die in a small rice container, as I mentioned before. And also King Jongjo passed away suddenly at his, uh, at his age 49, and his son was 11 years old. And King Jongjo had mother dread 11 times. So I I don't think 11 is lucky number for King Jongjo. It's very tragic number for him, King Jongjo. And also, King Jongjo built this Suwon Hasan fortress near his father's royal tomb. It's just around 10 km away uh, from his father's tomb. 
So, so this one as a portrait shows his filial piety toward his late father. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this Suwon city, uh, this Suwon has a fortress is in the city of Suwon, Suwon city. And Suwon city has a nickname, the city of filial piety, because of the King Jongjo's this story. Okay. Uh, and also, I'm now on the on top of the mountain, so it means some buildings are on the mountains, but some buildings are on the plain ground, on the flat ground. So the Swan has a fortress was built according to its topography. So the constru its construction based on the geographical features. So. This swan as a portrait is very well harmonized with the natural setting. Okay, let's keep watching. So this is the Sojang Day. The Western Command Post is the highest point. So they monitoring all this area. Yeah, this is Sojang. We will walk down around the swan as a portrait. So Let's go. It, it, it will be a little bit steep. So be careful to walk. Okay. Follow me, please. So if it rains, it should be very slippery. So be careful. So we are now going steps. to West Gate of Suan Hazong Portrait called Hua Song Moon Gate. So we will go there. It takes around maybe 10 minutes on foot. Yes, we are keep moving. Okay. So you can walk along the portrait wall. This is Poru where the military soldiers hide themselves and they hide the cannons here so they can shoot cannonball here and also rifles shoot the rifles here so it's a defendance and defense defend and attack place and also they, the soldiers can take a rest here so this one is poor roof you can see the white flag there, so it means it represents the west. So the color of the flag represents the direction. So you can see the black color for north, and red color for south, and blue color to east. So the color is different. So you will see the change of the color of flag while we are walking along the Swan Hazan portraits. And then I will sh show you another military facilities so this facility this space is for military space military facilities so you can see so you can see the different view through this hall it's a shooting hall called Chong'an so you can see the long distance, so you can attack the distant enemies. You can shoot the rifles here to long distance enemies. Then, this one, this shooting hole is, you can attack the enemy to nearby enemy, the close enemies, so different uh, shooting holes. Yeah, they are different shooting. Different types of shooting. This facility is called Chi Song Chi. We call it Chi. So, so this part is called the Chi. Enemies and defend enemies who are climbing the city. Uh, the so so this Chi, this part is called the Chi. So Chi put truth to attack the enemies who are climbing the cri who are climbing the fortress wall. So you can shoot the arrows, you can shoot the rifles, so it's easier to defend and attack the enemies. On the fortress wall, you can attack here, from side and from rear, you can attack the enemies who are climbing the fortress wall. 
So now we are arriving, we are approaching the Hwasomun gate, it's a west gate. So we will see the Hwasomun gate and then Gongsundong. It's a very unique military facility and so So we will see two structures here. So now I'm going to Hwasomun gate, it's the western gate and also this is the unique military facility. So I will introduce two structures soon. So this one is Hwasomun Gate, West Gate. And then you can see the square building there. That is the Gongsundong. Gongsundong. So North West Gongsundong in English. That Gongsundong building structure is the original one. Okay. So it's already been hard to get around the sauna and pool trees. So maybe <laughs> you need some strong energy to take a trip in sauna and pool trees. But it's good for you. I lost around three kilometers after this tour. We are going through the Hwasohun gate now. careful when you step down the stairs this semi circular structure is also military facilities we call it Ongsong Ongsong so at that time the enemies tried to break the gate with a long Lock with the long lock, so they need they need space to speed up the attack with the long lock. So they run from the back and hit the gate to break the gate. So Ongsang made it difficult for many enemies to run from behind with a large lock to break the gate. But this Ongsang doesn't supply enough space. So it's a military facility and also how many no enemies how there are many enemies there are the enemies who can enter this own own zone is limited so it's easier to attack and defend this facility this gate so this one is called own zone and military structure and we can attack the enemies here shoot the arrows shoot the arrows here so the limited enemies are here, so we can attack and defend these fortress. This is a Sobu Gongshin Dong. It's the original Dong, and King Zhongzhou really liked this place. So whenever he visited here, he showed this building to his subject. So this is the first Gongshin Dong. Gongshin Dong is a watchtower. It means that Gongshin Dong means empty inside, so they can. Surrounding area, and you can see the holes, scare holes. That is just shooting hole. They can attack the enemies by shooting guns there inside of the Gongshin Dome. So he showed the, this building. Uh, King Jongja showed this building to his subject, and watch it as much as you like. So King Jongjo was very very satisfied with this Gongshin Dome, uh, the watchtower by saying his subject okay look at this uh, Gongshin Dong as much as you like so he really really liked this first Gongshin Dong okay, so he really satisfied with this so you can see the change of color from white to black yeah I told you already so the change of color of flag is also very fun to find <laughs> while you are walking through the fortress work, uh, walking around the fortress so north color it means the north ah, i mean the black color represents the north and we saw white color it represents west and we will see the blue color 
it is it represents east Yeojang and Yeojang This space looks like you They can shoot the arrows here so Shoot the arrow here There's lots of Pagangam granite Pagangam in Korean and in English it's granite Trees is made of mainly granite, except for Gongshimdong we saw just before. That was made of bricks. Bricks. So this is Chang Anmun Gate, main gate, and North Gate. So there is a military facilities here also. Yeah, this is a military facility called Hyun An. So you can pour hot water or slippery oil to prevent the enemy's access so you can pour the hot water or slippery oil to to expel the uh, the enemies that one is also military facilities so the soldiers can pour the hot water or slippery oil through this hole the vertical hole prevent the enemies while climbing the fences. So we pull out the hot water or slippery oil through that hole. We call it Hang An. Yeah. Okay, so let's go inside of Jangam Gate. So also you can see the King Jongjo's fortress over there. We call it Osongji. So we can pour the water. If the gate caught fire, the water to extinguish the fire. So this Osongji prayed that rules. You can pour the water if the gates under the Osongji, this five round hole. So the gate was caught the fire. You can pour the water through this Osongji, this five round hole. So this is Chang Anmun Gate. It's the northern gate of the fortress of this Suan Hasan fortress, and its main gate. But it's very unusual to have the main gate in the north, because the important buildings at that time have had the main gate in the south. So such as Palace and Hanyang Dosan Fortress in Seoul, they have their main gate in South. But this Suan Hasan Fortress has the main gate in the North because the North faces the Hanyang, the capital city. So it's easier to come to Suan Hasan Fortress from Seoul, I mean the Hanyang, the capital city. So they make the main gate in the north. It was the groundbreaking to have the main gate in the north at that time, according to Confucian manners. The Confucian was state, state ideology, state philosophy at that time, but King Zhengzhou seems not to be obsessed with the Confucian ideas, Confucian philosophy. He only focused on how people comfortably, how people happily, Okay. Changamun means uh, the cities live comfortably, happily. So King Zhengzhou focused on how my people live happily and comfortably. The Changamun Gate means people live happily. So you can see the photos, the destroyed Changamun Gate. Yeah, it was destroyed during the Korean War. Destroyed during the Korean War and restored. 
here, Tom Hanks. So it's a very tragic place to for Koreans. Can you see this Mars? This Mars? And there are other Mars on the world. The Korean Korean yeah, those are bully marks uh, during the Korean War. So it's one of the tragic um, air, uh, gate in Korean history. So this is the back of Chang Amun Gate. Take a dead bike, you take a comfortable trip of swan and uncle trees. Now, this area is one of the most beautiful oh, out to the south swan and uncle trees. So, we have another flood gate in the south where the water go out. So, it's entering place. <coughs> So you can imagine the enemies can sneak into through this gate because they don't block they didn't block the water. So King Zhongzhu always think about the harmony between the buildings and the infrastructures. So it didn't damage the natural So this stream passes through Suwon Hasang Pool trees. This area is the northern flood gate. And this one to go down to the south. And we have another flood gate in southern area. So two flood gates. And this northern flood gate has a nickname Hua Hong Moon. Hua Hong Moon Gate. It means the beautiful rainbow gate. So you can see the rainbow shaped uh, gate, flood gate under the pavilion. So seven uh, flood gates there. And I love, I love sitting on the Hwahu Moon gate and looking at, just, just see the stream and hear the sound and spacing out. It's my relaxing time, especially after heavy rain. So it, it's a very good place to take a rest and to gather healing. Also, in usual time, this bridge, this gate play the role as a bridge from east and west, from west to east, the bridge. And in emergencies, they can shoot the cannonballs and shoot the rifles from the Hwahong Moon Gate. So it's one of the beautiful place. And we call this Hwahongmun Gate the gate sitting on the sitting on nature. The gate sitting on nature. It has a nickname also like this. Okay, let's keep watching. And this pond is called Yongyang. The most, yeah. most beautiful they dug place this pond, in they dug this place. pond and make an island in the center. So there is a saying that there is a there is a said that uh, the rain ritual is held over there when there is a drought. They prayed for rain over there in the center of the island. Okay, let me clear this explanation one time. 
<laughs> I was very tired at that time, so my brain and my speaking go went different direction. <laughs> Sorry. And this is the most beautiful place, and they dug this pond called Yongyeon, and they made an island in the center of Yongyeon, this pond. And there they held the rain ritual when there is a drought the, in the island. Okay, let's keep watching. <laughs> So many locals enjoy this area and they draw their paintings and they especially the for couples. It's one of the they course in Suwan City. So you can see the whole the poultry store and you know the couples and the family members. So there is a secret gate called Amun in Korea. It's a hidden gate, not to be found by enemies. So we, when the war broke out, they used, they need to use the secret gate. So that play, that gate played the dead rules. It's a secret gate, and it's designed to pull, to pull inward, to open. If if enemy found that secret gate, the, our soldiers fill the soil, the back of the moon, the secret gate, so enemy cannot open and enter there. And there are five secret gates. If the enemy found open. this gate, we will fill the soils here, not to be opened. This gate, so this gate designed to open inward. Like this. So this is Panghua Surujang. Uh, it's Gangnu Pavilion. So Gangnu Pavilion usually built on the high hill, on top of the hill with a great view. So people can take a rest. I mean the soldiers at the time. Soldiers can take a rest. And they are, they were monitoring the surrounding areas. This is a Panghua Surujong. It's a Gangnu. So this kind of Gangnu is made on top of the hill with a great view. So soldiers can take a rest there and also monitoring the surrounding area. Yeah, this Panghua Surjungja Pavilion is one of the most most beautiful place and nice view, especially at night. Suwon Asan Fortress is loved by many locals and night tour. So it's one of the night tour destination. Um, the light reflected on the water on the pond is really fantastic, really beautiful. This is Dongjangde. This is Eastern Command Post. It's also a very beautiful place at sunset time. With the sunset and this building are really beautiful. So this is a place where the soldiers trained. The eastern command post. So they can monitor this area. So it's a very beautiful place for around sunset time. Sunset and this building looks really good. So Chang Yong Moon is the taking, the taking blue, care of the east part. Blue represents east. So many people enjoy 
flying on kite, like up there. Yeah, many golfers enjoy flying kite on the weekend. So prepare your kite mm -hmm. and try to fly the kite there. Here's these letters. So this is one is the worker's name. So worker's name is real name construction system. So who made? So we can get to know who made these four trees. So it's a name stone plate. So Suwon Hasong Fortress was built the real lane construction system. So we know who made this part of Fortress. And it was supposed to be built 10 years, within 10 years plan to build the Suwon Hasong Fortress. But it moved up around 2 years and 10 months. So it's quite a shorter construction period than we they planned. So this is Changyongmun Gate and East Gate. And you can try the Korean archery here. So it's very reasonable price. Ten arrows and two thousand won. It's around one point eighty US dollars. Of countries was listed UNESCO World Heritage in 1997. So although it was destroyed cultural asset during the Korean War, but it restored according to Hasong Songyeok Uyge. It's royal protocol. So it make to its original form. So it can it could be listed in the UNESCO World Cultural Heritage. So this Swan as a portrait is listed UNESCO World Heritage in 1997. As you already saw the destroyed Jang Amun gate, the main gate, and other bully Mars, and they are all restored uh, structures, but they could be listed in UNESCO World Heritage. Can you guess why? So it was restored. It has been restored according to Hwa Song Song Yeok Uyge, its royal protocols. So it restored. It was restored its original form. So we could list the world, UNESCO World Heritage. So it's another way to take a trip in Suwon Hwasong Fortress. You can take this Hwasong Ocha trolley. But I, if you are okay, I recommend you walk around the fortress. So it just take around 15 minutes, 20 minutes by the Hwasong Ocha trolley. So I strongly recommend walk around the wall. So this Swan Hwasong fortress is the most beautiful and most advanced fortress of the east and west built in 18th century. So especially, and you can go there at night, the light reflected on the wall is really, really beautiful. And also Swan Hazen Fortress was selected as one of the 50 beautiful places to visit in Korea by CNN. So, Please, please come to Swan Hazen Fortress and enjoy the uh, world class heritage. This is Chang Am Moon. So, I've done my tour Swan Hazen Fortress. Did you have fun? Hopefully, you will have a good time and it's a chance to get to know Swan Hazen Fortress. So, next for your trip to Korea, please come Swan Hazen Fortress. 
it should take around one hour from Seoul, the capital city. So it's easy to come here. So please enjoy the saunas and cool trees. By the way, do I look okay? It's two different colors, I think. I just found my face. So it's a little bit dark and it's white because of I wear, I always wear the mask. So it's different face colors. Please understand it. And hopefully you have a great time. And hopefully see you soon after COVID-19. Until then, stay healthy and see you soon. So long.